So now we've finished the design portion of our project. We've created our rectangle with the line of text. And essentially for project one, that's all we were looking to accomplish. So now our um, next um, video is going to focus on the tool pathing or how to start machining this project. So you see over here in the project pane, uh, you see we've got the tool path operations. In the project pane, you see directly below it, it says untitled. This is a bit of a uh, a tipping point for us to let us know that we need to make sure that we save our work because up until now because this is called untitled I have not saved this project to this point so in order to do so I can go up here to my save function click on save I can call this we're just going to call this test and I'll just put this on my desktop and we will save this file uh, this test file and now you can see in the project pane it says test so it's now saved the file so everything has been saved up to this point directly below that it says tool pass if i click on anything in the project pane like tool pass all of the functions of that tool show up down in the bottom section here so in the tool pass section i want to focus on this line right here it's the 2d tool pass so we have five different 2d tool path options to choose from and i'm going to briefly go over them the first one's called the profile tool path the profile tool path is very simply this I'm going to click on this rectangle. Supposing I wanted to cut this piece out so that the outside would be scrap and the inside would be the piece. So I'm going to cut out a plaque with these inverted corners. Well, I could use a profile toolpath to do that. And what I would do is I would set the profile toolpath so that the tool was on the outside of the rectangle or on the outside of the vector and it would machine this away so that it would give me exactly an 8 inch by 8 inch uh, rectangle with the inverted corners. Supposing I wanted to do the opposite. Maybe I want to make a picture frame. So this is actually my piece, and the inside is going to be scrap. If that's the case, I'd still use the same profile toolpath, only this time I would set it on the inside of the line. So it would machine inside the line, and now I would have an 8-inch opening in the inside of my frame. The third option for a profile toolpath was supposing I just wanted to create a decorative border around this. Well, I can use again the same profile toolpath, but in this case, I'd change the depth to just maybe machine it very shallow but now I would use the, the toolpath with the tool sitting on the line so in the profile toolpath and you'll see it as we use it gives us the option to machine outside inside or along the line the second toolpath is called an area clearance toolpath very simply supposing I wanted to clear out the area in the middle of this supposing I wanted to machine it to a quarter inch depth that would be an area clearance toolpath so I would set the depth at whatever I wanted choose the tool I want and it will clear that area out. The third one is an interesting one. It's called a D-bit carving toolpath. And I'm going to zoom in on one of these letters just to illustrate what exactly a um, area clearing or a D-bit carving toolpath is. I'm going to draw a, rec a circle here. I'm just going to this circle is going to represent the diameter of the tool that we're going to use. So let's say that that's the diameter of our tool. So Imagine I decided I wanted to machine inside of this lettering, so I wanted to naturally think that that would probably be an area clearance toolpath. But here's where the problem exists. I'm going to take that circle and I'm going to try and put it into this corner to machine out the corner, and you see where the problem lies. The closest I can get to that would be maybe about there. The tool will be unable to fit in here, so it's not going to complete the machining operation. So an area clearance toolpath would not work if I wanted to machine out the center of these letters because I'm going to lose the end of this E. I wouldn't be able to machine in here because that tool, if this was the diameter of our tool, it's just not going to fit. So it won't machine where it can't go. Of course, I could use a smaller tool, but it's still going to have limitations. I'm just going to delete our circle here. What a V-bit carving toolpath does is it recognizes this geometry. So it sees this square corner. And instead of just trying to machine its way into the corner, what the tool does is, and this is using V-bits, so these are 60 degree or 90 degree V-bits, the tool will come into the corner and it will swoop out of the material, go back into the material, and as it does so, it will create that square geometry. So if I wanted to machine the inside of this lettering, if I wanted to machine a logo so that it looks exactly the way it should, a line drawing, anything that I want to reproduce the geometry exactly, the V-bit carving toolpath is the only one that's capable of doing that. It's an important thing to remember because when you're selecting toolpaths, if you select the wrong toolpath, you won't get the results you're looking for. The last two are very self-explanatory. One is a drilling toolpath. So if I perhaps was making a cribbage board and I wanted to machine um, all the holes for the cribbage board, I could use a drilling toolpath. And the last one is an inlay toolpath. 
exactly as described, it can make inlays. Supposing I wanted to do a solid inlay. Maybe I'm doing a uh, cutting board out of uh, black maple or out of black walnut, but I'd like to have a maple insert, maybe a maple maple leaf in the center of my cutting board. Well, I could cut out the both the uh, positive and the negative parts, or the male and female parts, and the one would fit perfectly in the other. The um, inlay toolpath also gives me the option to do veneer inlays as well. So back to my cutting board again, I want to do a black walnut cutting board, but I only want to put a 16th inch veneer on the top of it out of maple. Well, I can pocket out the black walnut using um, a small end mill, and then I could um, cut out the piece of veneer, obviously securing it down and cutting it out, and the veneer would fit perfectly inside of the cavity that I created on the, uh, on the, on the cutting board itself. So those are several different toolpathing strategies that we can utilize. 